once again to Spot Africa. My name is Ashalolo Afemi. Of course, yesterday uh, we began to look at uh, the chances of each of the uh, the teams in Group A uh, by qualifying for uh, the knockout phase. Today we'll be looking at Group B and Group C. So it's going to be an overdose for you today on the show. Our fans around the world, we appreciate you so much for your support. We thank you so much uh, for the journey so far. It's been worthwhile because you've been there for us. And uh, please, don't just watch our video. Please subscribe to our channel because like we always been saying, we have not even begun yet. Of course, the journey is just about to begin. Kado Gundari and James Agbrey, they are here and we'll be looking at uh, the epic battles in Group B and Group C together. Guys, you are welcome to the show. Thank you, Femi. Let's start the show. Yeah, thank you, Femi. Happy to be on today's edition. Oh, okay, I don't know. Okay, Kyle Day is Afghan, you have Nigerian. Let me start with Kyle. Kyle Day, <laughs> uh, Ghana, so much troubles. Uh, 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 Christine is carrying a baggage of troubles to Ivory Coast because a lot of pressure at home. And of course, a lot of pressure will be on him in, in, in Ivory Coast because uh, he has to perform. Now, let's begin to look at uh, the impact of uh, absence of uh, Thomas Pate in this with Kyle Day. Uh, let me start by saying I draw parallels between Nigeria and Ghana as much as you want to make me. <laughs> Nigeria. We have the same uh, similarities in, the, in our approach to the competition. In our like, uh, we we are we are doing as if it was yesterday that we knew that uh, Ghana and Nigeria too, of course. They are they are preparing as if they just knew yesterday that they were going to go to the Afcon. And so, so, so I I drop parallels between the two teams. Of course, party will be a big miss for anything. Any team, it's not about Ghana alone. If party were to be a Nigerian, oh. it would be solely, solely missed too. So, will they carry on without him? Of course, they will. Will his absence be felt? Definitely, it's going to be felt. Who is going to plug into that hole? I, I hope, uh, the, the guy at Lens, uh, Samadi, I hope Samadi is able, although he has the skill set, but the physical presence is what I do not know. What, what I am not sure about, then the leadership, Femi. Party comes with a, 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 a complete package for the team. So definitely they're going to miss him. Of course, there will be other leaders on the pitch, like uh, yeah, the DIU and the rest, but nobody is Party. Party is no other okay. person on the team. He is on the, in a class of his own. So definitely, to answer your okay. question, it's going to be a big okay. miss for Ghana. Okay. Uh, James, Ghana has not won this competition. How much pressure is going to be on Chris Tutin to hit the ground from the right in their first game. I mean, it's 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 the pressure here is is something that you cannot even uh as in it's 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 big, it's massive, you know. For the black stars going uh -huh. to this competition, especially the way the, the, the preparation, you know, they were supposed to to travel outside the, the continent before they now change their minds, you know, you so begin to ask begin to ask yourself um what, what led to the first uh, uh decision i mean why why the, why is it that all of a sudden they now decide to change uh the training camp you know so for me they are going into this competition under massive pressure like we always say uh, uh, this is going to make it 40 42 years that um uh, that if that if they don't win if they eventually don't win the, the afcon i mean it's going to be 42 years that's that's just too too bad for a massive team one of the biggest teams in africa not to have won that competition for for how many decades now you know for over four decades i mean that, that that's too much you know and this team going into this competition knowing fully well that they've not won this competition before and the pressure and everything for me i, I don't, don't know how they're going to cope they have a, they have a tricky opening game against Cape Verde, who they know a lot about and this team coming to this game based on what they've encountered against the Black Stars in the qualifiers, I'm telling you, Kevin will go into that game full of confidence, Femi, because it was a very uh, was a tight contest between the two teams during the qualifiers. And coming to this, um, the first game, Femi, you know how first games always are very, very difficult. I'm telling you, the, the Black Stars, they're not going to have a story in the fight. They're going to they just have to fight. It's all about fighting, putting everything in that first game. Okay. So that first game is going to be very key for them. You know, if whatever happens in that first game, you're going to give us hints of how they're going to perform in the rest of the competition. Okay, Akadi is going to be a calamity the size of Mount Everest if Egypt do not qualify from this group, but it is not impossible. Yeah, of course, nothing is impossible. I agree with you. Uh, Egypt, just like Nigeria, always 
start competition slowly, then they grow into the competition. Luckily for them, they are going to be playing against the guy that's, that's been all over the place in their preparations. Oh. They are not sure of what is, who is going to be where and everything. They're going to play against the Kevat. And one thing about the Egyptians that you must know, Femi, is that they know how to deal with the smaller teams, so-called smaller teams. They will beat you properly. <laughs> <laughs> they will beat you properly. You, I'm, I'm sure if you're going to look back, uh, remind me of the last time they lost to a small team. They always find a way of taking and putting you in your place. Where they need to win 1-0, they win 1-0, get the job done and, and move on. So, uh, Mozambique, I do not see them as a, as a competition. The only team I think, regardless of their form, that will give Egypt a run for their money will be Ghana. Will be Ghana. And hopefully by the time they play Ghana, they would have uh, put themselves in a position where they know that the passing to is secure. So for me, what's mathematically possible for them to crash out, I think really realistically talking, Egypt will qualify from that group. Okay. And uh, James, let's talk about uh, Egypt's uh, dependency on Mama Salah. Uh, it, it's been their biggest strong since the last one, the competition for this year is going to make it 14 years since the last one. They've not had this kind of, you know, gap uh, difference in years uh, before they won the competition. But let's focus on uh, the dependence on Mama Salah. I I'm not sure that she's done much fruit for them. Do you think if they do so in this competition, it might be very, very fatal? Yeah, because um, one thing I've come to realize is uh, most teams who, who depend on a particular player, they end up not doing much. I remember in 1996, uh, George Ware, he went into the AFCON 1996 as a uh, reigning World Football of the Year and they crashed out in the group stage, you know. So it's always like that. But he, he, has, he has featured in two finals and uh, they, they lost, you know. So for me, um, they, they, they are experienced campaigners. I don't, I don't want to believe that they're going to put all their eggs in one basket. You know, it's not until the AFCON is something that they, 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 they are the most successful team when it comes to the AFCON, you know. So for me, um, fine... Salah is going to play a key role. We all know that he's going to be the main man, you know, but they, they have experienced heads in the team, people who, who know the continent, players coming from Halali, players coming from Zamalek, you know, and the other teams, Ismail. And this, some of these guys, they played in the FIFA Club World Cup. So it's not as if the AFCON is one tournament that's going to give them fright. You know, they, they also feature in the club um, um, Chan. So they, they, it's, it's the continental exactly. thing. So they, they understand the terrain. So Salah is just coming to to hard, you know. You just need that that player that carry the team, you know. So I believe that they are going to depend on him, no doubt. Okay. But I believe he's not hundred percent dependent. He's going to play his own part. Okay. The other guys, so they are experienced, and they have what it takes to carry the team. Oh, okay. Uh, let's look at uh, Cape Verde now. For me, as far as I'm concerned, Cape they are the number one underdog in this competition. If you look at each of the groups. I don't think any team on their day, I don't think any other uh, minors or lightweight in any other group comes close to what KB Vard might likely do in this competition. Um, I, I will add Gambia to that, to that group of two. Like, oh. I expect either KB Vard or Gambia to spring a surprise in this competition, Femi, without, uh, and with very good reasons. The KB Verdians, they play with confidence, they play without fear. That's key, Femi. When you have a team, and they say, like they say in life, you should always be aware of somebody of the person who has nothing to lose. It is when they defeat you that it becomes an upset. If you beat them, no, it's, it won't make the headlines. So, and when you don't have anything to lose, you throw the kitchen sink at your uh, at your opponent. So that's where okay. Kevin <laughs> is very very dangerous. They think uh, they see themselves in the same category with Ghana. Forget about pedigree. They think, oh, they could take Ghana on and, and be and beat Ghana. And for me, that's mm. that, yeah, they think they, they have that belief that they could beat Ghana because of their previous engagements. And then I think they would just be a little bit too much for Mozambique. If they're able to get four points between Ghana and Mozambique, regardless of what they do against uh, uh Egypt, they could go through. So if they are going to be three teams from that group, I will take them alongside uh, Ghana and Egypt. Okay. okay, they say all is fair in love and war. And of course, Afcon is war. So Kadi has already eliminated Mozambique. But anyway, we yeah. have to talk about them. Uh, James, uh, Mozambique, this is going to be their fifth Afcon appearance, 1986, 1996, 1998, and 2010. They've 
not gone beyond that at uh, the growth stage before. Uh, James is going to be a mountainous task for them to so even get a win against any of uh, Cape Verde, uh, Ghana, or even Egypt. Yeah, I'm a little, uh, remember them. Uh, the, the 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 scare the game surprise was only qualifiers for 2010. So they they are that team that if you they are just like what they normally say if you lose guard they are going to take advantage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I believe uh, they will be eyeing that uh, third spot place. But you know, teams like this, they they, they always the the thing about them is they don't score a lot of goals. You know, for, you know that definitely they are not score Egypt, Ghana. You know, maybe they score a couple against um in very they just script a lot of results there and they just be hopeful. I I've not seen them winning two games in this group for me, you know. So I I'm not okay. expecting much from them at all. So I won't be surprised if they eventually crash out um from the group stage because they they've not really done anything spectacular okay. to give anybody hope about them. Okay, uh, guys, I can't wait for us to talk about group C. Uh, but before we before we go to group C on paper, on our paper, I I think our answers, who's gonna to talk to you? I can't I'll start with you this time. Okay. I'm I'm, te- I'm tempted to say Egypt will be will win the group. I'm tempted, seriously tempted to say they're gonna win the group. I've had a lot of people say uh they're coming to West Africa. People these people conveniently forget that they have won on West African soil before in 1998. So for them, the Egyptians have perfected the art of winning anywhere. And Nigeria have won in North Africa, we've won in South Africa. So where that is and uh, sometimes overrated factor. In all anywhere. Of, yeah, you, a good team is a good team anywhere. So I think Egypt will win this group. I am tempted maybe because okay, I, like you always say that I'm I'm Afghani and I'm tempted to say Ghana will follow them out of this group. Then Kivad, those three, I see them are, are qualifying from the group. Okay, James, let's have your order. Yeah, I think I'll go with Egypt, Ghana, and Emu. Okay, Egypt, Ghana. Maybe Kivad has uh, uh, third base in the group. Yeah, Maybe, uh, very, uh, very possible. Very possible. Yes, yes. yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, mm. okay. okay, guys, before we talk about Group C, let's go on this bridge. And when we come back, we'll talk about uh, all that you need to know in Group C. Please stay with us. All right, welcome back. It's still Sports Africa. And we've been looking at... Uh, uh, the chances, scrutinizing the chances of each of the teams in group in group A, B, that we've done now. Now group C. Uh, guys, I can't wait for this epic battle between Senegal and Cameroon. It it comes across like an Afcon final already. In the friendly last year, uh, Senegal defeated Cameroon one 0 I think it was in France. Um, the Senegal of um, two years ago, are they still the kind of the quality that we fa- we have now? Because then we had Sadio Mane in Liverpool, we had a uh, Koulibaly playing for Napoli, well, I think it was the assistant captain at the time. Then you have a couple of, handful of players right there, but you have these two guys playing in Saudi Arabia now. People can argue that their quality of their games must have dropped. Oh, definitely, it has dropped. You also have to add uh, the goalkeeper Mendy to that group. Uh, he is not, he's no longer at that course, point. Yeah. Like he was when he, when he kept going for them. Although some people will, would also have blamed him for some goalkeeping decisions that he made. Uh, at Afcon, but fortunately, he, he escaped and he made the same mistakes at the World Cup and he was exposed. But for me, like I said, he is no longer the goalkeeper he was, but he's a cracker. He's one of the games of the tournament that I was. If you take that, you take it along with Ghana, Egypt, and Nigeria, Every Coast. Those will be, we are very fortunate in this half confirmed that even in the group stages, we are seeing potential <laughs> final games. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nigeria, Ghana, Egypt, and this one. Uh, but for, for me, if you ask me, this comes, this like nothing gets bigger than this. Even though when you say Cameroon, uh, uh, Senegal are not the uh, Senegal of the past. Cameroon are also not the Cameroon of the pa- of, of the past. Apart from the fact that they have a relatively younger team, then they have question marks on their coaching department. For me, uh, like I was telling you off air, Rigo Basong has shown uh, as much. Uh, effectiveness as much effectiveness like Pesero 
you know that it's no long, it's not far off. Effect effectiveness in quotes, right? Yeah, effectiveness <laughs> in quotes. He has shown that uh, he's not someone to be trusted to go all the way. But he is who they have okay. now, and we all know the okay. reason why he's, he still has that job because of Eto, obviously. Okay. Yet, for me, it is a game I want to look forward to. No first round game will come close to it. Okay. And uh, James, uh, see, the, the high point of Cameroon's preparation that a lot of people have been talking about is Andre Onana. He's currently still with Manchester United. He hasn't joined uh, his, his teammate, James. That is enough uh, distraction for Cameroon. You know, alongside all the troubles that they have, you know, no confidence in Samuel Eto'o. No, a lot of Cameroonians do not even have confidence in uh, what to go by. Some will likely do. But you, what would you be looking out for uh, for Cameroon in this um, in this group? Do you think they stand a chance at all against the Gambia? Another very, very threatening underdog? For me, one thing I've come to realize about Cameroon, no matter the kind of issues they, they, they have, they always, especially when it comes to the Afghan, they always find a way to maneuver themselves out of uh, issues and surprise everybody. You know, look at the, the, the one thing about them is it's like they, they do well when it comes to playing outside. Um, in terms of hosting, the, you, you never see them, win. they've never won the Afghan as well. That's why the fact that they, they hosted it twice. The, there's always this unpredictability about them. Fine, they're having issues, Jonana issue, Rigobert Song, and and they, they didn't even take uh, the Bayern Munich striker. Uh, promoting. Promoting, yeah. You know, too. And that, that was one that was one thing about Cameroon is that unpredictability. I, I, I'm telling them they're going to qualify from this group. It's going to be that's going to be like draw here, yeah, one nil here, yeah, one one there, they will scrape out. <laughs> that was how they did okay. it in uh, 2000 when they qualified and went on to win the AFCON. They, they, they drew against Ghana, they defeated Ivory Coast, and they lost against Togo. But at the end of the day, they went on to win the AFCON. Though this team is is not, you cannot compare with those teams in the past, you know. But uh, there's, there's, I will always, always keep my fingers crossed when it comes to Cameroon. They are a very, very dangerous, unpredictable side that will not fool any further. You know how they how they go about doing their business. We, we, when they we, during the qualifiers when they were last walk up, they they drew at them against Algeria. They were so lethargic, so we all thought. Town leg in Algiers, in North Africa, they are, they are, they are going to crumble. Got the business done. They came out fighting. They fought their way to the tickets. We also have what they did to the Algeria. The last minute goal. So that's the kind of mentality they have. So I'm not ruling them out. I see them as one of the teams, Femi, that will qualify from this group. Okay. Uh, uh, Carl, the, let's talk about the Gambia. I, I know you said a lot about them, and I think a lot of our fans are actually interested in Gambia because, in the, in the um, uh, you know, the countdown we had for each of the teams. We saw that a lot of fans, are, a lot of our fans, took interest in their preparation. Uh, can they? Can they be? <laughs> because in my head, I think this group, Gambia, can actually even qualify ahead of Cameroon in this group. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very possible. And like I said, I've said this times without number, Femi. Let me repeat it again: that uh, in the history of the Afcons, each Afcon always throws up a dark horse that you do not expect for the tournament. But they tend to come up and then they surprise quite a number of people. And I say that in this AFCON, I expect Gambia to be one of two teams, the other being Cape Verde. One of them is going to be the surprise package. I'm not saying they're going to win the competition for me. Don't get me wrong before our viewers will, will come and hold me responsible. I'm not saying they're going to win, they're going to ruffle feathers. And it's on the face of it, it's a very, very uh, difficult group for them. But they are, you know, one thing about the design, the, the, the Gambians, they are as physical as anybody. So if you think you are physical, they will be there to play you with, in that physical game. So it is a very, they, they have this outside chance. I'm not going to rule them out. They have this outside chance of actually mixing things up with the, with, with the big boys and they start a chance of going through. Okay. Uh, James, as we wrap up now, uh, Guinea, do not. Find any chance of achieving anything in this group, literally. Uh, Femi, um, well, uh, Guinea, like you know, in our previous editions, uh, we discussed about Guinea. For me, they've not really done enough, they've not given people a lot of uh, reasons to to always keep them as favorites. You know, they are just those that that kind of team that we come. There are a couple of games that we they, they will play that will be so exciting at the end of the day, they will, they will not do much. So, Femi, I'm not. 
I'm not really expecting anything from the Sili national. And they've not really done much. The, the, what they do is they just, the highest they've done in the past is get to the semi final and the fusil out, you know. So let, let's let, let us see what, what they have up their sleeve. But for me, for me I, I'm not really, I'm, they are not a team that has done much to raise expectations, you know. So even if they qualify, fine, fine uh, at least. There's not really a bad team. If I want to put them in, in, in pots, like Kakari. Uh, uh, carry these pots, you know. <laughs> I will put them in uh, in the third pot in, in terms of ranking. I'll put them in the third pot based on the fact that they've okay. not really they've not really come all out. They come blazing that they are going to do something. This and they just come give you exciting games and they and they go out. So for me, yeah. uh, my expectation for them is not that high. Guys, in my head, I'm already thinking about the number of coaches that will lose their job if they do not do well in this AFCON. Because even <laughs> at every stage, you start to you start to, have, to get a lot of money. But clearly, if you get to the final, so I'm already thinking like hmm, FA, they are just running coaches. Seven million dollars. If you don't bring it back home, just return to your country, guys. Uh, thank you so much for uh, showing up on the show today. Before I go, let's do our uh, our usual uh, uh, ritual. How are they? Senegal, Cameroon, or Senegambia and Cameroon as third place, what would be your, your uh, pecking order in this group? Uh, this is not going to be strolling the park for Senegal, I must confess. I'm tempted oh. to be bold to tell you that those three teams might end up having the same number of points. With the Gambia? Even the Gambia? Yeah, with the Gambia. Gambia, wow. Cameroon, and... Uh, I recall, uh, Senegal. Senegal, sorry, they might end up having the same number of points in that group, and they will cancel each other out. So eventually, it might be goals that will separate them. It might even be a casting of lots. Anyhow, but I think those three will go through. Am I allowed to just put them in no particular order that those three will go through? And the oh, okay. three of them, they will get to the next round. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know why I'm not allowed to make my own uh, predictions or choices. But James, I'll allow you to, to do that. Do you agree with Kyle <laughs> Femi, uh, before I do that, I, I have my fears for Senegal. I hope they don't go the way of Nigeria after winning 1980. I, hope I, of, uh, I think my own fear is for Cameroon. I, I hope they don't go the way of Algeria who won it in 1990 and crashed on the group stage. I hope they don't go the way of Zambia who won it in 2012 and crashed on in the, in, the, in the group stage in following edition. So it's very, very possible. The spotlight will be on them. They are first time champions. I don't know how they're going to handle the pressure. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. being African champions only come with that kind of pressure. I don't know whether they have the what it takes. They, they still have a couple of players, but whether they are still that team that won it last time, I don't know. So um, but based what I'm gonna do is based on people, I mean, um, I'll give it to them, the top of the group, Cameroon. Then um because of the, the because of Guinea that I'm not too comfortable about and Gambia with the, the way they, they go about their business. I think I'll go with um, Senegal, Cameroon, and Gambia. Oh, okay, so you, that means you, you're going with Kyle. They both, like you said, my fear for Senegal uh, will also be they won't be like the Super Eagles one in 2013, fail to qualify in 2015, and uh, also in 2017. So we are already served up. Yeah, we already served up with um, so much to look out for in this uh, Afcon: Senegal, Cameroon, Egypt, uh, Ghana. Nigeria, Ivory Coast. I don't think we've had uh, this sort of uh, uh, group matches at the AFCON. Guys, thank you so much for uh, your thoughts on the show today. James and Kyle, they we appreciate you so much. Thank you very much, Femi. See you tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Femi. See you tomorrow. Okay, so of course, tomorrow we'll be looking at Group D and Group E. Uh, but the biggest thanks goes to um, our fans around the world. We appreciate you so much for your support. We do not take that uh, lightly at all. But please subscribe to this channel. Watch our videos, share our videos, and please subscribe to our channel. Like I already said, are you in, are you catching the fever now? Of course, we've we've been we've been drowned in the fever of the 2023 Afcon uh, for some time now, and of course, we are counting down just a few days to the kickoff uh, between Ivory Coast and um, Guinea Bissau. We see you all tomorrow. I remain Ashalolo Femi. Thank you so much, our producer, for doing this always for us. Thank you so much. Bye for now.